the Lord our God will call. Yes, you have been called because you recognize his voice. Good afternoon. I'm Brother Michael, and for several months I've sat over there in seat five. Um, and I've been invited this weekend by Father Richard Jacob, the Shrine Director, to offer the reflection this Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Easter. And for the past 60 years, it's been subtitled Good Shepherd Sunday. And since Paul VI, it's been World Day of Prayer for Vocations. Sadly enough, I remember most of it. Um, why me, you might ask? Why not Father Bogush today? Why have I been asked? Well, for nine years, I was the vocation director for the former St. Anthony of Padua province, and I was a member of the formation team for eight of those years as well. I also lived at the seminary for 10, so I have some insight. So he asked me to offer the reflection for this, the fourth Sunday of Easter, Good Shepherd Sunday. Three readings, a lot of material, at least 50 minutes worth of reflection, at least. <laughs> so much material, but so little time. I'll ref I will limit my reflection to that of the good shepherd and vocation. You'll notice before us on the AMBO this weekend for Good Shepherd Sunday, the classic depiction of the good shepherd, Jesus carrying that lost sheep on his shoulders. Have you ever wondered why is Jesus carrying that one stray lamb on his shoulders? My father would have said, get in line, let's walk. Any ideas? I did my research before I used words that I thought were appropriate, because I know there are some farmers amongst us. One theory that's used vocation-wise with regards to this particular depiction is that when Jesus found the lost sheep, he sprained the foreshank. Even if you pay close attention to the icon, you'll notice that Jesus is only holding three of the four limbs. The left front or right front is usually hanging. By doing that, the shepherd, in lower case, committed himself to carrying that sheep on his shoulders until it was fully healed. If you've had a sprained ankle, you know what I'm talking about two to six weeks, depending on how bad. And during that time, the sheep came to know the shepherd's smell, the shepherd's voice, the shepherd's walk, even the shepherd's heartbeat. The sheep came to know the shepherd, and the shepherd knew them. That sheep would follow, watch, and listen, and never stray again. I'll say more about that as we go along. We hear in that first reading from Acts, Peter's preaching to the crowd, and they were cut to the heart that the Lord our God will call. Yes, yes. Sometimes that Holy Spirit speaks in the depths of our heart during a retreat, during mass, or maybe in a quiet moment. Vocation, that call, coming from the Latin voca, a strong feeling of suitability for a particular career, occupation, particularly worthy of requiring and requiring dedication, sometimes called a calling, a mission, or a purpose. At the time of our baptism, we heard that this weekend as well, these words were spoken by the priest or deacon at the door or before the baptism. I claim this child for Christ, and the sign of the cross is made on their forehead. And the parents and godparents are asked to do the same. I claim this child for Christ. At that moment, at that instance, in those words, the vocation is planted. And we're not just talking about vocation in the limited sense. In 1 Peter, we go on and hear that those who have gone astray like sheep, but they return to the shepherd. Yes, they have been called. We stray. We make bad choices. Imperfection does not disqualify. In fact, some would say that those who stray the furthest are the greatest testament to God's mercy. In fact, if we look at John Paul II's writings and some of his reflections, when 
questions arose about folks he was advancing for sainthood, he said, we have to look beyond. We have to look at the heroic lives that these people have led. We offer that, our unworthiness to our God, and follow our God where he leads us. Vocation Sunday. Where does he lead us? The church states that there are four, four celebrated vocations. Everyone will give me the two, right? What are the two that are on our tips of our tongue? Priesthood, wrong. Priesthood, correct, but that's not correct. And, huh? Marriage, thank you. Priesthood, better ordained life. That means bishops, priests, and deacons. Consecrated religious the married state, and the single celibate. There's four that we advance, and we need to celebrate them the same, lift them up and honor them. This particular weekend, we're asked to focus on ordained and consecrated religious. Lift them up, more on that. Lastly, I thought of giving out little cardboard signs that said John 1010, so that everybody could go home with one and have it at a sport event in the near future. Um, But I didn't. Jesus is the good shepherd, and those who hear his voice follow. Hmm. Because you recognize the voice, how do we develop an ear to listen? How do we develop an ear for his voice in a world that is so noisy, so many voices, so many distractions? My hunch is there's a parent or two in here that would like to try the good shepherd approach to get them to sit and listen. We're we're not going to go there. Um, The idea of carrying them on your shoulders for six weeks. But Benedict XVI talked about this idea of quiet and prayer. He said that young people need to be offered opportunity for quiet and methods of prayer so they will know what to do, not if, when the Lord calls with God's will. Hmm. Listening, understanding, responding. When I was a kid, I grew up in Canton. I grew up in a neighborhood. When Public School 47 was ripped down, we got a really nice playground. It was great. Some kids had to go home when the street lights came on. My father's approach was a whistle his whistle at the front door. We knew his whistle. At the ocean, you're going too far, the tide's taking the other way, you've all been to Ocean City, come on back down here. You know. The whistle would be given out the front door, you'd stop, you'd run home. On occasion, imagine I was talking, not paying attention, and one of my buddies would say, hey Duff, your dad whistled, go home. To this day, I will stop in my tracks. And when I hear the name Michael, particular pitch, particular way, it's my mother. And I'll look. I'm 60s. I could be in a grocery store. I can be at the mall. I could be out anywhere. And I hear Michael. Hmm. It's usually a younger Michael doing something that I probably did many times, but being called by your full name always seems to get your attention. Learning to develop an ear and hearing our name called. Yes, this fourth Sunday of Easter, Good Shepherd Sunday, vocation awareness gives us opportunity to reflect. The Lord our God will call. Yes, you have been called. And can we recognize his voice? Does anybody remember the challenge Father Timothy gave us last Sunday? After the breaking of the bread, they after the breaking of the bread, they who said ran out of that place. Well, I'm going to make a challenge this week as well. Today's challenge is to sit with this idea of vocation, encouraging others to listen and to support. There are those in our midst who are being called to ordain ministry, to religious life, to the married state, to the single celibate. 
I am confident that God continues to call. Can this generation hear that call with the noise, with the distractions? Have they been schooled in listening? I would challenge the faith community here present today, let's say those above 29, to become shepherds. Take one of these youngsters, the next generation, onto your shoulders. Carry them in prayer. While they come to know the good shepherd, uppercase, come to know that shepherd's voice. Come to know his walk, his smell, even his heartbeat. This Sunday reminds us that God continues to call. May that call not go unnoticed. May the Lord give you and yours his peace.